Last week, Ubiquiti announced the UNAS Pro, which is their first entry into the NAS space. It's a seven bay NAS device that runs UniFi Drive, can be managed by the UniFi Site Manager, and overall is an extremely easy device to set up and use. If you want a full walkthrough of it, I'll leave a link to a video I did in the description, but overall, it seems like the majority of people are happy that Ubiquiti is entering this space. However, one of the biggest complaints that I read in comments on the UNAS Pro was that the device wasn't offering any specific applications and it was focusing on being a NAS. For me, focusing on being a NAS is great and the direction that I think Ubiquiti has to go, but a lot of people want or need to run applications on their NAS and for them, the device was lacking. So in this video, I'm going to take a mini PC that you can get for under $140 and configure it so that you can offload all of those important applications to a more purpose-built device but more importantly, use them in conjunction with the UNAS Pro so that you'll get all of the benefits of snapshots and backups. Now the device I'll be using is the GMK Knuckbox G3 that has an Intel N100 processor, an NVMe drive, and a two and a half gigabit NIC. I'll leave a link to it in the description, but the reality is you don't have to use this. You can use an old desktop PC you have, a different mini PC, or even virtualize this, which overall is the better solution in my opinion. But if you're watching this, you probably don't have a hypervisor. Now I've used this device to set up a mini PC home server running Proxmox, Docker, and Jellyfin already. And in my opinion, that's a better path to take if you're comfortable with Proxmox. But I wanna to attempt to make this as beginner friendly as I can, since that's what the UNAS Pro is designed to do. So we'll be installing Ubuntu 2404 on it. And the version, meaning desktop or server, doesn't matter. If you want a GUI, go with the desktop. But if you're cool doing everything through the terminal, use the server version. After it's set up and configured, we're going to mount the UNAS Pro as an SMB share, install Docker and Portainer, and even the media server Jellyfin. This process will allow the data to live on the NAS, meaning that we'll be able to utilize snapshots and backups from the UNAS Pro, but the actual mini PC will be doing all the heavy lifting. Jellyfin will be able to use hardware transcode meaning the integrated GPU on the N100 processor, and you'll be able to get just about any Docker container running. So I think that after you see this, you'll be very happy knowing that you can technically still store all of your important data on the UNAS Pro to get all of the benefits of it, but also have a pretty powerful but power efficient mini PC that can run all of your applications. Now we're gonna pick up after the operating system has been installed. All I did was go to the Ubuntu page, download the Ubuntu server image, set up a USB stick using Belena Etcher, flash the disk, and then install the operating system. I'll leave a link on how to do all of that in the description. Inside of the operating system installation, I enabled open SSH server so that I can SSH into this device without further configuration. But that's the point where I'm at right now. The OS is installed and I am SSH'd into the device. Before we start, I have links to all of this with all the commands we'll be running in the description. Okay, so what you're gonna see here is that we are at the dashboard for the UNAS Pro. So there's a few things that we have to do here before we can actually move on to the mini PC. What we're gonna do is go into the settings and then the admin and users section and we are going to create a new user. All I'm gonna do is call it mini PC and then I'm gonna delete the personal drive because this user account is not gonna need a personal drive. We're gonna click create and then what we have to do is click into the user and then we can go into the settings here and we can enable file service credentials. So this is how we're gonna access the UNAS Pro from our mini PC server. After giving it the password, we are going to confirm everything. And at that point, the actual user account that we'll be using is created. Now we're really gonna be using this as a service account. So it's not gonna be a traditional user on your NAS. It's only gonna be used for this specific mini PC. Technically, you don't have to do this. If you have a regular user account that you want to use instead of this, you can, but I'm gonna do it this way just so that you can see that technically you can do it as a service account if you'd like. Okay, so with all that done, what we're gonna do is go into the all files section and we're gonna add two shared drives. The first is gonna be Docker and then we're gonna add a user and we're gonna select mini PC and we're gonna set this as an editor. We can click add and we can add this. And the second is gonna be for our media. So I'm gonna do the same thing, mini PC, and I'm gonna set it as the editor. And at that point we can add it and we are good to go. So we have a Docker folder and we have a media folder. What we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our mini PC to these two folders. We're gonna mount them automatically and then we're basically gonna use them with the applications, but we will get to that. So at this point, all I did was SSH into the actual mini PC. If you don't know how to do that, the command is SSH, your username at the IP address of the device. Okay, so what we're gonna do is run a few commands here. The first thing that we're gonna do is install Sifs Utils. This is actually for the 
uh, the SMB share that we're going to be mounting. Now, as soon as that's done, we're going to create three folders. These folders are where we're going to actually mount the NAS. So the first one is going to be UNAS Pro. The next one will be Docker. And then the one after that will be Media. So at this point, we have the two folders that we need created. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is create a credentials file. And this is where we're going to store the credentials for that mini PC user. This is going to be for the service account. So it'll be accessible only to the user that you're currently logged into with the actual mini PC. And the credentials won't actually be in the FSTAB file that we're going to be editing later. So as soon as you create that, you basically have two lines that you have to do. You have to enter your username and the password. And then after it's created and saved, we're going to run chmod 600 on that file. And what that's going to do is it's going to permission it out to this user only. So now that that's done, we can go in and actually edit our fstab file. Now this is how the NAS is actually going to be mounted. And as long as this is configured properly, it will automatically mount on boot as well. So inside of here, you're going to see a bunch of stuff. Don't remove any of this, but you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to add two lines here. So basically, this is going to be the location on the NAS. So 192.168.1.33 is the UNAS device. And I have a static IP address for that. This is going to be the actual location on the local device. So this is the folder that we created. SIFS is what we're using. And then this is the big one. So credentials. So for credentials, this is pointing back to that actual file that we created with our credentials. Yours is not going to be home slash Frank. It's going to be home slash whatever the actual user account that you created is. And then it's going to point back to that SMB credentials file. And the period here is important because that's a hidden file. And then the rest of this can stay as default. So all this is doing at this point is mounting the Docker folder. But what we really want to do as well is we want to mount our media folder. So we're basically doing the exact same thing. The only difference is that we're pointing it back to the media folder on both devices. So you can save that by hitting control O, control X to exit. And then what we're going to do is sudo mount a. And at that point, the shares have been mounted. So if we CD into this folder, this is actually the UNAS Pro at this point. So the local folder will write directly to the UNAS Pro. So that is good. So at this point, we are technically done with mounting the folder. What we have to do now is move on to installing Docker. That's the first thing that we're going to do. So I have a link in the description with these commands. There's like five or six commands you have to run, but it will then install Docker. So I am just going to quickly run through all of those. And then after those have been run, technically we have to run an update here. And then once that update is done, we can actually come in here and install Docker. And after Docker is installed, we are going to actually start up the service. And then finally, we are going to configure Portainer. So Portainer, if you've never used it, is just an easy web interface to manage Docker. So we're going to configure that. And at that point, as soon as the image downloads and installs, technically, we can go to a web browser, type in the IP address of our mini PC plus port 9000, and you will get brought to the login page. So go ahead, create your user account. And then at that point, Docker is actually set up and configured. But what I quickly want to show you here is what we're going to do is come in here and create a stack. And a stack is just a Docker compose file. So I have a basic Docker compose file that I set up here. And what I want to show you is that what I did is I pointed the actual volumes back to that UNAS Pro Docker folder that we created for Docker and Unbound as well. So when we deploy this, we're going to go back to the UNAS Pro and what you're going to see is the actual folders for this Docker container are actually living on the UNAS Pro. So I'm going to come in here and quickly deploy this. And once it's deployed, if we come back to Docker here, you will see that there's the Pi-hole folder and there is also the Unbound folder. So at this point, the next thing you really should do is set up a schedule with protections. So set up a snapshot schedule. So at this point, if anything ever happens to these containers, we can always roll back to a prior version. So now the volumes exist on the NAS itself as opposed to existing on the mini PC and you'll get all the benefits of the snapshots plus backups. So at this point, Docker and Portainer are installed and configured. And what you can do is move forward and install as many Docker containers as you want. There's a ton of tutorials online. But what we're going to move on to is installing Jellyfin. Now, you don't have to install Jellyfin. You can install Plex or even MB if you want. But Jellyfin is an open source solution, and it's entirely free. And since I wanted to show you the actual hardware transcoding, we're going to use that. So installing Jellyfin is actually very straightforward. The only thing is we have to be the root user. 
So we are gonna run a script that will install Jellyfin, and then we just have to press enter to install Jellyfin, and it will run through and install now. Okay, so Jellyfin has been installed, and now what we're gonna do is open up a new tab, and in our browser, we're just gonna to go to the IP address of that mini PC server and port 8096, and as soon as you do, you're gonna get brought to the actual setup page of Jellyfin. So I'm just gonna quickly run through this, create a user, and then in our media library section, I'm gonna come in here and just set up any content type. But what I really wanna show you is that we're gonna select the actual mount for our media. Now this is gonna be pulling directly from the UNAS Pro. So if you have subfolders inside of there, you would potentially have one for your movies, one for your TV shows, etc. I'm just gonna come here and leave everything else as default. I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna click next, and I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm just gonna sign in. And as soon as you sign in, it's gonna to start to crawl in your data. Now this is the data that lives on the UNAS Pro. So I came inside of the actual media folder here and I just added my video from last week so that we have something. And then what I wanna show you is I wanna show you hardware transcoding. So if I start to play this, it's going to run through and you're gonna see that it's transcoding, but it keeps skipping because it's not transcoding with the actual GPU. So what we are going to do is set up hardware transcoding for the GPU. So we're gonna go back here, we're gonna come up here, we are gonna to go to the administration dashboard, we're gonna to go to playback, and then at this point, we're gonna change hardware acceleration to Intel QuickSync. I'm just gonna select everything here so that it transcodes, and then we are going to come down and save. Now the final thing I wanna show you is I'm gonna install the Intel GPU tools, and after they're installed, I'm gonna run this so that we could see the actual integrated GPU on the N100 and see if it's being used. And as you can see, it is not being used. So if we go back here and we actually play that video again, what you'll see is we are transcoding again. The video is playing smooth, but more importantly, you can see that the GPU is actually being used at this point. So we configured the Jellyfin server to use hardware transcoding. And since we installed it with the actual script, there's nothing else you have to do. It just works and you will have smooth playback on just about any device that you're actually using. Now again, if you go back to the UNAS Pro, remember that you should set up snapshots on all of your shared folders, and then as soon as you actually take a snapshot, you'll be able to go back through those versions and see that everything is working as expected. You can come in and create a backup task, and now all of your Docker containers and media, if you wanna back up your media, will automatically back up as well. So you basically have a lot more data protection than you initially had if that data was actually living on the mini PC. Now at this point, Docker, Portainer, and Jellyfin are installed and configured, but the actual data is being stored on the UNAS Pro through SMB. This allowed us to configure snapshots on the folders for data protection, but this data can also be backed up at a later time. And even better, if you ever wanted to move Docker and Jellyfin to another server, the source data is now on the UNAS Pro as opposed to the mini PC. Overall, I think if you set something like this up, you'll be very happy with how it operates and you'll think the UNAS Pro is a lot more capable than you might have thought if you were relying on any of those applications that the UNAS Pro does not support. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.